Hi guys, welcome to the Tech Grunt. Today we are going to solve the number of island problem. This problem will help you understand the DFS in a in a very smart way. So do like and share the video, subscribe to the channel to get further update. So let's jump into the problem. It says that given a 2D grid map of ones and zeros, where one says one is land and zero is water, count the number of island. Uh, an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting at adjacent land horizontally or vertically. So you may assume all the four edges of grid are surrounded by water. So in this case, if you see all these ones, basically all these, this one, 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 all these are connected part. So it forms one island. So the output for this will be one. It has just one island. Now, if you take the example of this, this has one island as this which consists of four months there is one island here which consists of just one we cannot take the one which are like uh, um, diagonally opposite the ones should be connected either horizontally or vertically so it has one island here of four ones one island here of one one and one island here which consists of two ones so it has three island now given any grid how you will find the number of uh, island that is present so yes we will use dfs like i told so what we can do here is we can start suppose this is the grid that has been given to me so if this is the one that is given to me i can start from here and i can go or uh, suppose i I start from here so from here since this is equals to 0 I cannot count it so I may go to the next one so I come here so I come to this one now I need to check whether the left side the right side up and down am I connected by a land or here it means whether I have a one to my left right up or down do I have a one or not if I get a 1 then I recurse so I check for the further state so let us take this example if I start from the first position suppose I start from first position here I cannot go up I cannot go left so I go right I come here I see that uh, okay from here can I go a further right or a left or up or down so here I should not go to left because I have already covered this so I should have a mechanism to mark this as visited or already covered. Suppose I make it as X. So once I move from here, I will make it as X and uh, yeah, I will not go to left. I cannot go up. So down and right I can go. So let us come here. So once I come here again, I should mark this as X or I can mark it as zero as well. So that is fine. So once I come here, then I should again check whether I can again go to my all the four direction if I can so I will again mark it as X and I will move to my next direction so the same thing goes here so this will be marked as X this will be marked as X this will be marked as X so from here if I uh, from here I cannot go anywhere else because all are zero so I return back here from here again I will return back here return back here when I return back here I need to check again for the other direction so here I will see yes I can go down I can go further down I can go left I can go up and once I have marked all the visited place everything will come back here my cursor will or my DFS will come back to the first position now when I move from here I need to check whether this is a one this is not a one so I move forward this is a one this is not a one and uh, when I, I first found one here so that time I will increment some counter so initially the count was zero when I encountered a one I will make the count as plus one so it will become one when I encountered one here for the very first time now since I have visited all these place I should not uh, increment my counter as yet suppose if I find something here as one then in that case I might increment my counter but for now I will start from here I will go towards right I am not finding any one so I will just skip all these things so at the end my counter gave me value 1 let us 
walk through this example so if i take this example my initial counter will be zero here i will encounter one so i will increment my count as one and i will mark this as <coughs> x and i can go towards my right I, and i still found a one so since this is in continuation of the previous previous run or the previous dfs i am not incrementing my counter as yet so i will mark this as x i can go down i will mark this as x i can go left i can mark this as x so everything has been marked as finally i will return here and my count is 1 now i will go to this this is not equal to 1 so i will skip this is not equal to 1 i will skip this this all these are not equal to 1 so finally i reach here when i reached here i found a 1 so i will increment my counter i will make it as 2 i will mark it as x i made it as x i will go to all the direction i don't have any one now so everything will return back to here again i will start from this zero and i'll continue till i find this one so when i found this one i'll make my counter as three i will change this to x and i will see whether i can find another connecting one or not so i have and that's it so my count is three so number of island is three that is the approach that we are going to take so let us see <coughs> how we can uh, uh, code for this i will code in the similar way like i explained so we'll put one condition here we'll say if grid equal equal to zero grid dot length equal to zero so we don't have any island we'll return otherwise we'll say for uh, int i equal to zero i less than grid dot length i plus plus and uh, j equal to zero j less than <coughs> grid of zero this is for number of columns and j plus plus so i started the count and i will say this is a grid of care so i say if grid of i and j if this is equals to 1 in that case if that is the case so I need to increment my count so I will have a count here I will say count plus plus <coughs> if I encountered 1 then I will say count plus plus and I will start my quest for uh, uh, searching um, searching the surrounding so I, I need to check left right and uh, top bottom so I will name a function dfs and in my dfs I will pass the grid I will pass the ith coordinate I will pass the j coordinate and that's it if the this returns anything so finally I will come here and I will say return the count okay and now we need to uh, we need to write this dfs function so how dfs will work is in the similar way what i explained here so this will not return anything and uh, function name is dfs it will take this char grid it will take int i int j all these things it will take and once i have my dfs what i need to do is i need to define the boundaries so the boundary will be defined as if i is less than zero so it means that I am on the I am on the uh, I am crossing the boundary on the left hand side ok so I cannot do that or if j is less than 0 same thing can happen if j is less than 0 it means that I am crossing the boundary on top ok and uh, i is greater than grid dot length it means that I am crossing the boundary on right hand side and uh, j is greater than grid of 0 dot length it means that i am crossing the boundary on uh, the lower side actually it should not be greater than it should be greater than equal to both of these should be greater than equal to this part okay and uh, one more condition that we need to put is 
uh, when for, for our return is if I have encountered a zero means if it is not equal to one. So if it is not equal to one, I don't need to uh, I need I don't need to go further. It means that uh, the search has stopped here. So if I have started from here, I reach here. This is not equal to one, so I will return from from my DFS. So if this is not equal to one, then in all these cases, I will simply return. Okay. So if these are the cases, I will return. Otherwise, if these are not the case, it means that I have encountered a one here. Okay. It means I have encountered one. So if I have encountered one. So in that case, what I will do is first I will mark my grid as visited. So for that, I will say this is equal to X. So my grid is equal to X and then I will visit all the four directions. So I will pass my grid. I will go to I minus one comma J, which is if I am here. So I will go one row above. And I will check here whether I have a one here or not. Then I will go one row down and check whether I have a one there or not. Otherwise, I will go one row back, so one column back. So I will go here from this point J minus one, and I will also go to J plus one. So these are the four places I will visit and. Uh, Based on that, I will keep on marking this as uh, visited, visited. So that is how it will work. So if if I visit all these places, I have already marked it as X. So next time when this loop runs, it will see the value as X. It will say that okay, grid value is not equal to one. So I will not increment my counter and I will not go for further DFS. Okay. So let us try to execute this code and test the scenario. So it works here. Let us try another test case. We'll run this case, which returns three. So <clears throat> let us run this. I hope it accepts space. Let me remove these extra spaces. So it is three. Let us submit it. So it's it completed in one millisecond and it's very fast. So that is how you do the DFS and uh, this can be used in multiple scenarios, not only for this island case, but anywhere if you have to check for a grid kind of thing or you need to see whether the neighbors have been visited or not, you can apply this kind of logic and it should definitely work. So thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye.